Decades before, in the month of October, another missionary found himself facing the same final moments here on Earth. And what was on his mind? Perhaps the very thing that drove him to weather the peaks and valleys of ministry in the Middle East, eternity. It was October 16, 1812, when the missionary Henry Martin breathed his last breath in the mountains of Tokat, Turkey. His last diary entry said, Oh, when shall time give place to eternity? When shall appear that new heaven and new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness? There, there shall in no wise enter in anything that defileth. None of that wickedness which has made men worse than wild beasts, none of those corruptions which add still more to the miseries of mortality shall be seen or heard of any more. Henry Martin was prone to a violent temper. He was described as self-centered and full of contempt. You may think that's a little harsh, but this was a description of Henry Martin by Henry Martin himself. Though he had glaring flaws, he also had a sense of self-awareness and he would use this skill to continually chisel away his self-described sharp edges. He's remembered for his courage, selflessness, and his religious devotion. Even today, parts of the Anglican Communion celebrate his life with a festival on October 19th. Henry Martin was born February 18th, 1781 in Truro, United Kingdom. Shortly after, his birth mother died. Growing up motherless, his father tried to tame him by redirecting his focus to the sciences. Martin was a small boy and would often be bullied by the other school children. To combat this issue, Martin employed the services of an older, bigger boy named Kempthorne. It was Martin's temper that ultimately drew him closer to Christ. You see, Martin came very close to killing a dear friend. In a fit of rage, he hurled a knife at him. Luckily, he missed. But this incident prompted his friend Kempthorne to urge Martin to take some time away. During this time of reflection, Martin experienced a spiritual transformation. He learned of the work of missionaries in India and the American colonies. Learning about the lives of these courageous men inspired him to go to the nations himself. Through these encounters, Martin's original plan for law school slowly shifted into a call to ministry. Accepting a position as the chaplain for the East India Company, Martin would use the proceeds to support his family. Henry Martin ministered as a chaplain in India from 1800 to 1810. During that time, he translated the New Testament and the Anglican Book of Common Prayer into Hindustani. At his own expense, he established a variety of schools for the native Indian population. Often under threats of personal violence, he began to win over the hearts of the people and became a popular preacher. While in India, Martin combated sickness every day but he managed to translate the entire New Testament into Urdu as well as Persian. Henry Martin was the first Protestant missionary to make significant efforts to bring the gospel to the Muslims of India. Martin also translated the Psalms into Persian. During that time in history, Persian was understood from Calcutta to Damascus. Martin's New Testament was the first translation into Persian since the 5th century. With his Persian translation of the New Testament complete, Martin left India, setting out for the province of Bushire. He had with him letters from diplomat Sir John Malcolm, written to men of position there, as also at Shiraz and Isfahan. After an exhausting journey from the coast, he reached Shiraz and was soon plunged into discussion with men of all different classes. The Sufi, Muslim, Jew, Jewish Muslim, and Armenian were all anxious to test their prowess in debate with the first English priest who had visited them. Martin was able to share the gospel there and the people were able to hear the message of Jesus. Martin continued to travel all throughout the Middle East. He went to Tabriz in the country of Iran in hopes to present his New Testament translation to the Shah. Although he didn't deliver it himself, the Shah wrote him a letter. 
Through the learned and unremitted exertions of the Reverend Henry Martin, it has been translated in a style most befitting sacred books. That is, in an easy and simple diction, the whole of the New Testament is completed in a most excellent manner, a source of pleasure to our enlightened and august mind. In the midst of his ministry, Martin was diagnosed with tuberculosis. Doctors advised that he find a place with fresh sea air to aid in his health. But instead, Martin was headed for Persia, and the dusty air did not do him well. He eventually made his way to the mountains of Turkey. The only Christian in the mountains of Turkey, Martin's letters and diaries reveal his physical struggles and the faith in God in which he found his strength. In one journal entry, he wrote, I cast all my care upon him who hath already done wonders for me, and am sure that come what will, it shall be good, it shall be best. How sweet the privilege that we may lie as little children before him. I find that my wisdom is folly and my care useless, so that I try to live on from day to day, happy in his love and care. Finding new strength in the cool mountains, Martin started a new project, translating the Bible into yet a third translation, this one being Arabic. During a journey to Constantinople, his fever and chills increased. With the increase in his sickness, so too his harsh mood. He was aware of his irritability and made notes in his journal, scolding himself for his temper. While in the middle of his translation in the city of Tokat, Turkey, Martin died this month in history on October 16th, 1812, at the age of 31. Though his life was short, the impact that Martin had through his translations of the scripture made an eternal impact. He once said, now let me burn out for God. But he probably had little idea how fast it would happen. Martin compressed a lifetime of service into just six years of mission work.